I will discuss a case of post adenoidectomy bleeding in a nine years old male child. He underwent adenotonsillectomy and presented on the tenth post operative day with a history of two days bleeding from the nose and he started to spit fresh blood and blood clots from the mouth. Child was admitted to the emergency room and uh, nasal decongestant drops were applied in the nose and there was active bleeding in the post nasal space uh, but the topical decongestant drops failed to stop the bleeding and because of the uh, severity of the bleeding despite of the fact that the child was uh, vitally stable and he was conscious but he looked pale so the decision was taken to readmit him to the operating room in order to examine the post nasal space and to find out the cause of the bleeding he was admitted to the ward and uh, within half an hour he was uh, taken to the operating room after uh, induction of the anesthesia and insertion of the intratracheal tube there was a start of active bleeding and the mouse was full of uh, fresh blood and uh, the nasopharynx was exposed by inserting a catheter inside the nose to retract the soft palate and to expose the, uh, the nasopharynx using a 45 degree lens as we can see here. We can see uh, the large blood clot within the post nasal space using the rigid uh, suction the blood clot was removed and we can see the active oozing from the remnant of the adenoid the curved forceps was used to remove the remnant of the blood clot and you can see the remnant of the adenoid with the active oozing this adenoid was curated using the adenoid curette and it seems that the uh, primary surgeon didn't have a look at the adenoid at the end of the procedure so he, he left behind the marked part of the adenoid which started to bleed. The decision was taken to use the cupellation at the power of 8 to ablate this remnant of the adenoid and at the same time to induce hemostasis. Of course, the EVAC 70 is the, is the handle which has been used. It has to be bent in order to reach the nasopharynx. As you can see, by using the EVAC 70, the remnant of the adenoid is ablated and at the same time, we can induce a state of coagulation. This has to be taken step by step in order to remove the entire remnant of the adenoid. It is not a lengthy procedure. The main advantage of this procedure is that it is done under complete visual control using the 45 degree lens. So you can entirely remove any remnant of the adenoid and at the same time you ensure adequate hemostasis. You can see the Eustachian tube just on the lateral side of the evac. This is the right Eustachian tube. The process would continue until complete removal of the adenoid. This is the part of the adenoid close to the station tube orifice. It has to be ablated. And at the same time, any site of bleeding can just be controlled by the rapid movement of the wand. There is no need to use the coagulation but use the copulation power.
here you can see the quenal part of the adenoid uh, in the depths of the, uh, the field you can see the posterior end of the vomer and this is the quenal part of the adenoid yeah you can see now clearly the posterior end of the vomer and the posterior end of the inferior turbinate and this was the quenal portion of the adenoid it has to be removed in order to ensure adequate breathing and to avoid any risk of re-bleeding. Sometimes you need to bend the wand more in order to be able to reach this area. So you can completely remove this quenal portion under visual control. Here is the right side. The adenoid in this case was vascular, maybe because of the infection, because it's a tense post-operative day. Step by step you can see that you can reach the level of the capsule of the adenoid or what we call the prevertebral fascia. Here you can do also the caudal portion of the adenoid. This is the caudal portion. But this way you are ensuring that there will be no risk of recurrence of the adenoid. As a final step, you can use the EVAC 70 just to do the final hemostasis by just rapidly moving over the surface of the adenoid under endoscopic control just to induce hemostasis as you can see. This is the final step. And you can see on your left side the left station tube orifice. And the control of any apparent bleeding points. So the blood loss is really minimal by using the copulation and the tissue damage is very minimal because the heat generated by the copulation is not as high by using the diathermy or by using the laser. This is the final appearance of the tonsillar, the adenoid bed, and you can see the posterior end of the vomer clearly, the two ostician tube orifices, and the posterior end of the inferior turbinate bilaterally.